We've been driving from Israel in an APC for over an hour to reach Khan Yunus, southern Gaza, accompanied by the men of the 98 Commando Division, who are protecting us. We are inside the Gaza Strip, inside the suburbs of uh, Khan Yunus, inside a war zone. According to RDF, we're going to a uh, place where some hostages were being held, inside the heart of uh, Khan Yunus. At least some of the hostages were being held there, such as Saar Calderon, Sapir Cohen, and Or Yaakov. Others are still in the hands of the terrorists. We're reaching the heart of Han Yunus. The destruction in this war zone really stands out, but that's not it. Hamas is conducting all its terrorist activities in the midst of civilian life. In the heart of uh, Khan Yunus, this is where the tunnel has been built, probably took years for the terrorist movement to um, build it inside the neighborhood, inside a civilian neighborhood. You can see that Hamas is using all civilian facilities to protect itself. As you can see here, everything is, um, this is a war zone. We can see time to time and we can hear some um, okay, artillery and, and, and um, very severe booms that we can see that this is especially a war zone. We're going to hear now uh, the co division commander of this area, 90, um, 98 division. Let's have a listen. And what you can see in front of you over here is one of many tunnels that are underground in each and every one of these neighborhoods. And what you can see here is actually that in an ordinary neighborhood, there's a shaft going down and there's a tunnel which we're going to go into and it's going to go on and on and on. And in this tunnel over here, the kidnapped civilians, women, children, elderly people were taken in from the 7th of October. Some of them were taken in as trophies, just as trophies. According to this officer, tunnel entrances can be found everywhere under kindergarten, schools, mosques and supermarkets, all connected. Attacked by RPG missiles, snipers and explosive charges, the soldiers of the 98 Division fought for many days so that we could get inside the tunnel. Would you say that IDF is controlling the area now? Definitely, we're controlling the area, otherwise we couldn't, we couldn't be here. Yet all you have to do is listen. Fighting continues in a nearby perimeter with the commandos of the Givati Brigade. So there was a house over here. So this was a house. This was a house over here. So we're, we're under a house at the moment. Okay, so we're going under a house and we're stepping under a house. So we're under the kitchen. Look at the time, if it's cement that has been put into this into this tunnel. And look at these houses. Look at how they look at the, the blocks outside the house. That's how the house used to look like, right? They didn't put time and effort and money into building Khan Yunis. They took time, money and effort building the underground terror tunnels. Let's go in. How did you get inside the tunnel? Was it, um, uh, there were clashes inside the tunnel or you just took control of the area, you get inside? We had inner counters outside and inside. So what we're doing here in Khan Yunus is for the first time in world military history is actually maneuvering over and underground simultaneously. So it took us time to evolve, to learn, to understand how to do that. But that's what we're doing today is maneuvering over and underground. I myself uh, was uh, uh, blown up by an IED entering a tunnel. Uh, so, where was that? Just in another different tunnel around the corner. The guards of the terrorist tunnel stood in this room, inside, 
Sterilized gauze, expired food and first aid kits from the Palestinian Red Crescent were found. A few meters away, a kitchen with all the necessary supplies. Have a small request, and that is switch off all your lights. And then, without a doubt, one of the most intense moments of our time in this tunnel. All your lights, switch them off, switch them off. They kidnapped our people, they brought them in here. What I'm trying to give you is the feeling of a one-year-old baby in this tunnel. The feeling of the kidnapped people brought in here and taken in these tunnels. No electronics, no connection to the outside world, just darkness and darkness and darkness from all points of view. So you can have the two or 20 seconds of just spending, switching all your electronics off in the dark and understanding the feeling of the humidity, the heat, the loneliness, and the disconnection from the outside world. Showers and toilets here, with shampoo still on the sink. The floor is covered with cans, blankets and mattresses as we go along. For dozens, hundreds of meters, it's difficult to breathe. Here, you can see a gate to get from one gallery to another. Okay, we are one of this uh, tunnel underneath uh, Khan Yunus uh, Center. We are walking for minutes and minutes, and we didn't get to the, the end of this tunnel, a tactical tunnel called by one of the general uh, who fought in this uh, area. You can see all the facilities, electricity, there's no air inside. Um, we know for a fact that there were a lot of fights also inside to get the IDF soldiers, elite soldiers, get control of this tunnel. Let's have a look. This is a, a bomb, it's called, uh, we call it the sacrifice bomb. This is a bomb that they run and they stick on the, uh, on the tank or the armored uh, vehicle and it will uh, try to blow up the uh, tank or the armored vehicle. That one over there is the Yassin 105. That is the RPG. Um, modified RPG, which is a, a more explosive RPG, which they're firing at our, at our tanks. You can see a 120 mortar, uh, the grenades, gear, shawaz, which is an IED used. It's an, uh, an IED. These, these IEDs are made by the Hamas. What you can see here on your right hand side is the way that, uh, <coughs> that the terrorists use to block the tunnels to prevent us from moving and maneuvering in the tunnel. Same sacks over here, same blockage you can see if you look, you put your camera up and you can see the tunnel going on. Can you see the tunnel going on? Watch your head here. Try not to uh, get connected with the wire. Okay, okay. Okay? Huh? Watch your head with the wire. Watch your head, watch the cameras. We've been walking for over 20 minutes in these narrow galleries. Here, there are even staircases built into the rock. The walls are very tight. The cement is not the same. So we've moved to another district underground again. It's an underground city. And then we arrive to another facility. This is the room where Hamas leaders were sleeping, two meters from the hostages. And like I said to you, when you asked me, are we going to get them? And I said, we'll get them. We understand better and better how the underground compound is. You're gaining ground faster and faster, more efficient by maneuvering under and upper ground, and uh, we're gaining, and we're taking these compounds every day. But you have to understand, time is a factor, and the underground maneuver isn't as fast as the overground maneuver, and things are different. And sometimes you go faster underground, sometimes you go faster overground, but you're trying to make it simultaneously and connected. 
That's why it's taking time. Not only because of that, but you, to flush out the enemy from the time and effort that they've spent building here. Years and years and years. This is not a two-year project. This is years of building. This is years of planning. So if anybody has a question, how long do I think the 7th of October was planned for many years. They planned and thought about everything, including murals on the walls. There were at least 12 hostages here. Three of them have been released. So if the world needs any evidence at all, if anybody needs any evidence to the horrific action that was taken by the Hamas, we're in it again. Above us is 25 meters of ground, gravel, houses. We've been walking and walking and walking and walking. We've changed the neighborhood. We're in a different neighborhood that we entered. You'll have the ability to go back. Um, the, I would say, somewhat uh, doubtful privilege of walking back through the tunnels all the way out to emerge to the upper world. And this is where the hostages were held. According to the general, the hostages were moved from one tunnel to another during the ceasefire. Everything was planned, thought by Hamas. As you can see, everything almost is new. There's no other word. This is a cage. This is a kind of new slavery. Where we are standing, probably at least three hostages were being held by the terrorist organization Hamas that planned everything to stay probably days, weeks, and months. According to one of the generals, it um, probably they thought and they planned it during the ceasefire. It's unbelievable. Once again, this is probably a modern slavery. In each of the galleries, there are improvised, well-guarded cages to prevent further hostages from escaping. After two hours underground, we are invited to leave the tunnel, which runs for several hundred meters, maybe more, in the heart of Khan Yunus. It was the first time cameras were allowed inside, before its destruction. The number of installations and electricity meters on the wall is striking. At the corner of a gallery, here, an unexpected elite soldier, and also this realization, it's a real labyrinth. 365 kilometers square of territory inside the Gaza Strip and more probably 700 to 800 kilometers of tunnels. Here is the example. In every tunnel you have plenty of galleries such as these. This is exactly what Hamas built during the years. We saw several elite soldiers from the 98 Commando Division on our way back. A few dozen meters further on, we're finally outside. Constant noise of surveillance and combat drones, armored vehicles, destroyed buildings that Hamas terrorists used to hide in, and then ongoing feelings that civilians, in the middle of this residential area, ignored all Hamas activities before and after October 7th. When you see this entrance of tunnels and these balconies, these civilian balconies, did the civilian know about what's going on under the feet. And more than that, did they see hostages, Israeli hostages, being held to this tunnel? This question can be answered. We left the heart of Khan Yunus without answers, without knowing until when the fighting will continue, when the Hamas leaders will be caught. And even if the Israeli flag flies proudly, it's impossible to know where the 136 hostages still held captive by terrorists are hidden.